Today's reading from Romans, Romans 13, verses 11 through, through uh, 14. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Michael, come on up. We're going to have a do-over. We're going to do try it again. Let's see which one of them we can get to light. All right? So, see if you can get one of try it again and see if we can do that. Having having some hope in here is an important thing to me. So, it's possible that we may not have any oil in our lamp. <laughs> So let's, let's see if that might be the case. Because this is going to be important to what I'm fixing to say. is the man. <laughs> Perhaps this has happened to you. Something really important is coming up. Something for which you need to be on time, present, aware. You put it on the calendar in plenty of time. You set the reminder message on your smartphone. You make appropriate plans to go to bed early to make sure you get plenty of sleep. Only you can't go to sleep at least not like you intended. You lay there and you think about it. That little person in your head keeps going through the Rolodex or the Filofax or whatever it is and goes over and again and again and you think about what the meeting is gonna be about or what if I'm late and then comes the dream, the one where you realize that you missed it, you overslept, you forgot, you couldn't find your keys, or the car wouldn't start, or the traffic was more horrible than usual. You wake up with a start, heart pounding, until you realize that it's only 4 a.m. And, well, some of you get up at 4 a.m. For me, it wouldn't have been that long. And it was only a dream, and that you didn't miss it at all. Relief washes over you as you realize that there is still time. Time. We all wish we had more of it. Although what we would do with it varies. Does it not? We say we want more time. We really don't want more time. We just want to be more productive in the time that we've got. More time with family, more time for hobbies, more time to rest, Forgive me if I step on toes, but I suspect that if we did have more time, we would just pack it full of the things that we already pack it with, rather than use it for the things we claim to want it for. Am I right? Or am I right? We most often think of time in a linear fashion. It is 9.38. It's almost lunchtime, the meeting is in two hours, 
that kind of time is measured and measurable. You see, we're human beings. We have to have that kind of structure, or at least those of us who function on the J scale do, those of you on the Myers-Briggs that don't, who are just kind of whatever happens whenever, don't seem to need a watch, just a calendar. We have lists and lists of lists. We find some comfort and satisfaction as we check things off of them. Again, forgive me if I step on toes. But it's possible that one can get so busy marking things off his or her list that he or she can't really remember anything in particular that was done. We just get so busy doing that we can't really think of any one thing we got done. We just know we got it all done. That we filled up our calendars and our day planners with so much activity if even one thing goes wrong, the whole schedule comes tumbling down like a house of cards. And I won't speak for anyone else, but that sounds more like scheduled chaos than time management. And even though we might wish it possible, we can't literally be in two places at once. Time becomes a precious commodity. We don't want to waste even a second of it. We heard the reading from Romans. The gospel reading this morning is from the gospel according to Matthew. It's tied clearly to this reading from Romans. In it, Jesus says, keep awake, therefore, no oil in our lamp, <laughs> for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming, but understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. We cannot predict when it is that Jesus is coming. So we should be ready as Jesus says in another place, with our wicks trimmed and oil in our lamps. <laughs> I kind of like it when things work out to be an example. <laughs> you don't even intend it to be a great example and it works out well. Paul says in his letter to the Romans, you know what time it is. For how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. Salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness. Let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. One of the things that I talk with people about when they, when they talk to me about some difficulty they're having or some concern that they have, how, how, how do I deal with this, Pastor? What, what should I do? How does this, how can I keep from? I will encourage them to, to consider that they are encapsulated within the light of Christ. They see themselves within the light of Christ. And that that light of Christ is um, a force of good, a field that keeps, a filter that keeps evil things from getting in. And whatever might be inside of a person that is not so wonderful or whatever draws it out and filters it out as well. The armor of light. The season of Advent is an invitation to pay particular attention to time, past, present, and future. More specifically, it's an invitation to experience the presence of God, past, present, and future. During Advent, we prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ. 
both as a celebration of his birth, the past, and in anticipation of his return in the fullness of time, the future. That's one of the difficult things about all of the scripture readings during Advent. They aren't warm and fuzzy most of the time. They are really difficult. They talk about end times. They talk about strife. They talk about difficulty because what we're talking about here is preparing ourselves for the return of Jesus Christ. When Paul wrote his letter to the Romans, it had been several decades since the death and resurrection of Jesus. The earliest Christians, including Paul, thought that Jesus was coming back soon. They thought he was coming right back. They thought he would be back within their lifetime. They thought he was going to be back like tomorrow. Even though it had been, not had been that long then as it has been now, Paul spoke a word of encouragement and urgency to the believers. You know t what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake up from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first became believers. How often we become complacent. We get sleepy. We get tired. We think nothing's going to happen and so we don't act as if anything is going to happen Amen. salvation is nearer today than it was yesterday Amen. right yes. when people ask the question when is Jesus coming back well none of us can answer that question when is the end of the world going to come I don't know but I can say this it's one day closer today than it was yesterday. I need to be just as prepared today as I'm ever going to be because I don't know when it's going to happen. The new creation is compared to a, a new day. Paul believed that just as time had a beginning when God brought thing, all things into being, there would be a time when God will bring the history of this world to an end and usher in the promised new creation. So Paul tells us what time it is. It's time to wake from sleep. It's time to get up out of bed, to get ready, to get dressed for the day. Did anybody ever have to tell you more than once to get up? <laughs> ever get up get up it's time to get up as Paul paints this picture it's still dark outside when this theological alarm clock goes off the day is near but not quite here perhaps it is that mysterious moment when the darkness of night begins to give way to shadows and there is just enough light to know that morning is around the corner. In theological terms, in theological terms, what that looks like for believers is the hope that we carry in our hearts and the trust that God keeps God's promises. We have seen enough of the inbreaking of the kingdom of God that we know that it must be true, that even though we still see through a glass darkly, even though we see that things are not perfect, we also know that God can be trusted. There is just enough light that we trust that it is true. Theologically speaking, that is what we are talking about. This is a time of anticipation, and Paul urges his audience to action. It's a time to get up and get dressed. And the clothing that Paul wants us to put on is Jesus Christ. We are to put on his life and his way of being. We put aside things that dull our senses or draw our attention away from what God is doing. Paul entreats his readers to put aside quarreling and jealousy, 
things that destroy community and injure relationships with others. Put on the armor of light, Paul says, which is to start living now as though the new day has already begun. I'm going to start stepping on toes. And I'm not talking to any one of you. All right? So I'm real aware that I'm going to step on toes, and I'm not talking to any one of you. Got it? Y'all are all nodding to me, right? You got it? So, so here goes. When I find myself starting to speak critically, I have to stop and think, this is not putting on the right clothes. When I find myself wanting to say something ugly about somebody else or make assumptions about what their motives were with something, I have to stop and think that is not putting on the light of Christ. Folks, what I'm talking about here is not necessarily the big stuff, like literally going out and beating somebody up or killing somebody, I'm talking about the things that start within my own heart, my bridling my own tongue, marshalling my own emotions, marshalling my own thoughts about what I think somebody else's motives or actions are all about. Maybe taking the time to ask what was going on or what happened or getting the facts or something like that. Putting, putting myself in a place where I am willing to see that there might be more to the story than what I assume might be the case. And all of that starts in my backyard. It starts at my house. And then it starts on my block, in my community, in my town. Do you see what I'm saying? I can't do something about what happens way out there until I start with what happens at my house. And me getting up and putting on Christ that day. Theologian Karl Barth called the age in which we now live the time of great positive possibility. He died in 1962. I'm not exactly sure which age he's talking about. But then again, I think about what great positive possibility we have. We do not know when time as we know it will come to an end, but that should not keep us from living now as if the fullness of time has already arrived. And we talk about this all the time. If we really did treat other people as we ourselves would like to be treated with compassion, and generosity with thoughtfulness would it not change things if if we if it started with us and yeah sure it's possible that we might get stepped on a little bit but after a while after a while we wouldn't notice it so much because the fullness of Jesus Christ would live in our hearts in such a way that we would be protected by that light that would help us to see something different. That we would be able to see people for who God sees them and not our own image of them. We claim that Jesus is the reason for the season and we're being challenged to live that way beginning now. See, we're going to celebrate Jesus' birth in a few weeks, but the urgency that Paul conveys is that we should not take for granted the gracious gift of salvation that God offers to us right now. 
through Jesus Christ. So now is the time to wake from sleep. Now is the time to put on the armor of light. Now is the time to be in Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.